the critical density. What is it, and why does it matter in maintaining the balance of our vast universe? Let's dive in. Critical density might make you think of something dense like a black hole, but it refers to the destiny of our entire universe. It's the exact density of matter needed for the universe to neither collapse under its own gravity nor expand into oblivion. So how do we measure something so vast? It all starts with the Big Bang Theory. Picture the universe as it began about 13.8 billion years ago, an extremely hot and dense point. Since that explosive beginning, the universe has been expanding. The rate of this expansion is crucial and is measured by the Hubble constant. The critical density is linked to how fast the universe is expanding. A faster expansion rate would need a higher critical density to keep everything in check. So, what does this mean for the shape of the universe? This is where the density parameter comes into play. It's a ratio that compares the actual density of the universe to the critical density. Depending on this value, our universe can be open, closed, or flat, each with its own cosmic destiny. Estimating the universe's critical density involves observing galaxies and their distribution across space. By understanding the mass and spacing of galaxies, scientists can estimate the average density, which helps gauge the critical density. If our universe's density is higher than critical, it could collapse back into a singularity, a process known as the Big Crunch. If it's lower, we might face the Big Freeze, where the universe expands forever becoming colder and emptier, but if it's just right, the universe will continue expanding at a decelerating rate in perfect balance. Understanding critical density helps us grasp not just where we are in the universe, but potentially where we're heading. It's a fundamental concept that tells the story not only of the universe's past, but also its possible futures. Now that we understand the concept of critical density, let's take a closer look at how it relates to one of the most significant discoveries in modern cosmology the Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB. The CMB is essentially the afterglow of the Big Bang, a faint radiation that fills the entire universe and provides a snapshot of the cosmos when it was only about 380,000 years old. Think of it as a cosmic baby picture. The CMB is not just a pretty picture, it's a treasure trove of information about the early universe and its subsequent evolution. Here's how it connects to critical density. The CMB isn't perfectly uniform, it has slight temperature fluctuations. These tiny variations correspond to regions of different densities in the early universe. Imagine these fluctuations as the seeds from which all current structures, galaxies, clusters, and superclusters grew. By studying these fluctuations, scientists can infer the critical density at the time the CMB was emitted. The CMB also helps us understand the overall geometry of the universe which is determined by its total density relative to the critical density. Specifically, the patterns in the CMB fluctuations, like the size of the first acoustic peak in the power spectrum, indicate that our universe is flat. This suggests that the total density is very close to the critical density. By analyzing the CMB, scientists can estimate the proportions of normal matter, dark matter, and dark energy in the universe. These components contribute to the overall density and influence how the universe has evolved since the CMB was emitted. The critical density today includes contributions from all these forms of matter and energy. The CMB allows us to measure the Hubble constant, which is crucial for calculating the critical density. The expansion rate of the universe affects the redshift of the CMB photons. By measuring this redshift, we can determine how fast the universe was expanding when the CMB was released which in turn helps us estimate the critical density. Satellites like the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, WMAP, and the Planck spacecraft have measured the CMB with incredible precision. These measurements confirm that the CMB spectrum is a nearly perfect blackbody radiation curve, aligning perfectly with predictions from the Big Bang model. The detailed analysis of the CMB's temperature anisotropies and polarization patterns allows cosmologists to estimate the critical density of the universe with high accuracy. This data enriches our understanding of the cosmos, offering clues about its past, present, and future. So, as we gaze at the cosmic microwave background, we're not just looking at the remnants of the Big Bang. We're peering into the very fabric of the universe, unraveling the mysteries of its critical density and its ultimate fate. Now that we've peered into the early universe through the lens of the cosmic microwave background, let's delve deeper into the missions that made these revelations possible. The Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, 
or WMAP, and the Planck mission. The WMAP mission, launched in 2001, was a groundbreaking endeavor designed to measure the slight temperature differences in the CMB radiation across the entire sky. Following up on NASA's Cosmic Background Explorer, COBE satellite, WMAP, provided a more detailed picture of the infant universe by capturing those all-important temperature fluctuations, fluctuations that correspond to the seeds of future galaxies and cosmic structures. WMAP's observations were instrumental in establishing the standard model of cosmology. They provided precise measurements of the universe's age, its composition, and its rate of expansion. Operating from a special vantage point in space known as the Sun-Earth L2 Libration Point, WMAP enjoyed a stable thermal environment and optimal observing conditions. After nine years of successful data collection, the mission concluded in 2010, but its legacy lives on. Enter the Planck mission, operated by the European Space Agency, ESA, and launched in 2009. Planck took our understanding to an even higher level by mapping the anisotropies of the CMB with unparalleled sensitivity and angular resolution. Observing in nine wavelength bands that ranged from microwaves to the very far infrared, Planck's detectors were cooled to temperatures close to absolute zero, eliminating interference from their own heat emissions. Planck's measurements provided profound insights into the composition and evolution of the universe, including the proportions of normal matter, dark matter, and dark energy. The mission also tested theories of the early universe and the origins of cosmic structure. Planck's first all-sky map of the CMB was released in 2013, and the mission concluded later that year after more than four years of groundbreaking research. Both WMAP and Planck have left an indelible mark on the field of cosmology. Their data continue to be analyzed, offering new avenues for testing theories about the universe's beginnings and its ultimate fate. These missions have been fundamental in shaping our current understanding of the cosmos, providing us with a clearer picture of the universe's critical density and its evolution over billions of years. In our quest to understand the universe, the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, or WMAP, played a pivotal role. But how exactly did WMAP measure those elusive anisotropies in the cosmic microwave background, CMB, radiation? Let's uncover the sophisticated techniques behind this marvel of cosmological exploration. WMAP utilized a method known as differential microwave radiometry. This approach involved comparing the microwave radiation temperature at different points in the sky to detect minute variations, those vital anisotropies that hold the secrets of the universe's infancy. Key features of WMAP's measurement technique. The heart of WMAP's measurement system was its differential microwave radiometers. These radiometers had two antennas pointing in slightly different directions. By rapidly switching the signal received from one antenna to the other, the instrument could subtract one from the other. This process effectively measured the temperature difference between those two points in the sky, revealing the subtle anisotropies. WMAP's instruments created comprehensive full-sky maps of the CMB by systematically scanning the sky. As the spacecraft orbited around the Sun, it also rotated on its axis. This dual motion allowed WMAP to scan large portions of the sky over time, resulting in a complete and highly precise map of the CMB. Precision was paramount. To ensure accurate measurements, WMAP's instruments were meticulously designed to minimize noise from various sources. The spacecraft was stationed at the second Lagrange point, L2, of the Earth-Sun system, a location that provided a stable environment with minimal thermal fluctuations, crucial for reducing measurement noise. The data collected by WMAP were meticulously analyzed to produce a power spectrum of the CMB anisotropies. This spectrum illustrated how temperature fluctuations varied with the scale or size of regions on the sky. The shape and amplitude of the power spectrum offered critical insights into the density, composition, and evolution of the universe. Through these advanced techniques, WMAP provided us with a detailed and precise picture of the early universe. Its contributions have been monumental in shaping our understanding of cosmology, offering a window into the universe's past and guiding our predictions for its future.